been reserved for the king's pleasure. Therefore the king's portion is reserved for you. A prepared position awaits you with the king of kings sitting at the head of the table. He desires that you sup with him in the presence of your enemies. By accepting his personal invitation, your needs are met, the desires of your heart fulfilled, and to top it off you will receive the exceeding abundant above all you can ask for or even think of. Imagine that. The more you understand the king's heart, without a shadow of a doubt, you will begin to make more room for heaven's treasures. Welcome to King's Portion. This is Catherine Joy Foster. And the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is part 271. Now this is section AJ of a multi-part instruction, similar to a nation sending an ambassador into a territory. Jesus commanded the body of Christ to go into all the world. Now, although your kingdom of God assignment is in the world, it is not in you. Jesus Christ is. You are his anointed carrier of the presence of God as well as the power of God. Now, your assignment, your appointment is to bring the world into the kingdom of God until it is proof positive that those who have turned the world upside down are come here to really upside down is right side up now this first section i will address second corinthians 10 3 from the amplified bible for though we walk in the flesh as mortal men and that's non-gender specific we are not carrying on our spiritual warfare according to the flesh using weapons of men and today will help you to discover that 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6 documents your divine way of escape. Reposition yourself to secure revelation knowledge from the Spirit of God and the Word of God to resist the devil at the onset. And those verses from the King James Version says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through our God, to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Now, since Satan is after your experiential knowledge of God. You can further develop the Lord as your impenetrable defense to preserve the absolute truth you can absolutely trust at all times. Now, borrowing from the Greek definition, experiential knowledge is that knowledge that is functional within you, that is working knowledge gleaned from your first hand personal experience connecting the word of God to the manifestation of what you have received because of your direct relationship with God. Because this fight is always characterized as a spiritual battle, it is impossible to keep Satan defeated in the natural realm at all. To deactivate the deception, the error, the lie or the fabricated evidence appearing real, never strip off or slip out of the whole armor of God. To remain resistless in battle, live a Holy Spirit led. Then activate every spiritual weapon that can only be enforced supernaturally. So we're going to employ 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 3. Six, throughout our program today, we will carefully break down these scriptures into usable, 
compartments. With each step, you'll recognize the sequence of demolishing what Satan thinks to be his greatest weapon against you. As we begin, keep the following truth in the forefront of your mind. Keep the word of God and the spirit of God first place in your life on a daily basis. Then out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will command, not just communicate the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. That is how you recognize your irresistibility in the spiritual realm. You remain appealing to the Most High God as well as appalling to Satan simultaneously and spontaneously. You are more than a conqueror through Christ, because God loved you so much that he gave you his very best gift, Jesus. To make your own calling and election sure, you are God's best gift in this world at this time. When you abide in your chosen sphere of influence, God anointed Jesus with the Holy Spirit and dunamis power, the miraculous power, to carry out his assignment and agenda on earth. Now Jesus works through us and with us to ensure his miraculous signs and wonders follow us because he is here to guarantee the word of God is the absolute truth you can absolutely trust at all times. When the God kind of faith in you arises to the occasion, it manifests as the works Jesus performed during his earthly ministry. Jesus also promised that you would do the greater works in the earth with the presence and power of Holy Spirit in your life. Now is your time. Now is your turn. Not stopping there, but Jesus Christ gave us God's gift, Holy Spirit. His purpose is to establish perfect succession of the finished work of Christ in the earth through the entire body of Christ. The Spirit of God, Holy Spirit, is always your comforter. He is a very present and active force in your life at all times. It does not matter if it is a time of war or a time of peace. You can activate Holy Spirit in any sphere of influence because he is always present for you to activate the power of God. Now, as you embrace the mind of Christ, and that is the very intellect of Jesus Christ in you, Holy Spirit, number one, teaches you all things. Number two, he reminds you of what Jesus commanded. Number three, he guides you into all truth. Number four, he shows you things to come. Number five, he testifies of Jesus. And number six, he is the only source where you can receive revelation knowledge. So yearning for Holy Spirit and yielding to be spirit led, you can engage every battle as more than a conqueror in order to seize all the spoils of war from Satan successfully. Everything Jesus finished at Calvary for you was for you to never lose any ground that he already taken. Now you are more than a conqueror and God guarantees that you cannot lose a battle unless you surrender your victory the victory Jesus already won to Satan. Now in Christ, you surpass every evil, wicked enemy force through the spirit of God and the word of God. You are always fighting at the level where there is no competition. Here is the recurring thing I will share with you throughout the program today. Jesus' succession plan names you as his change agent to serve his divine purpose, plan, and path in one or even all of the seven mountains. Number one, government. Number two, business. Number three, media. Number four, education. Number five, arts and entertainment. Number six, religion. And number seven, the family. Every kingdom of God assignment 
is established on the word of God as well as executed by the spirit of God. If it is not, the mission will be an obstruction against your own breakthrough. Your minimum contribution is by prayer and petition that is to intercede. And your maximum contribution is by practice and participation in the spheres of influence God has chosen for you. And that is to intervene. I'll be right back after this message from my sponsor. Please plan to stay tuned for the entire program today. The Catherine Joy Foster Music Ministries is a 21st century multimedia marketplace ministry. In your discovery, you will find the power of God present to go where you are, to take you where Jesus is, raising you up, repairing you, restoring you, so that you can be as Jesus is in this world. Now available for workshops, banquets, conferences, webinars, concerts, prayer meetings. You can call area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Again, that's area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Proud to be an advertiser for King's Portion Web Radio. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section two. And I will address unpacking 2 Corinthians 10, 4. Now from the Living Bible says, I use God's mighty weapons, not those made by men to knock down the devil's stronghold. Now in Greek, that stronghold is defined as a fortified military stronghold, a strong walled fortress, and it's so heavily fortified that it's containment. And figuratively, it means it is a false argument in which a person seeks shelter, a safe place to escape reality. Keeping the aforementioned description in, in mind, Ed Silvoso carved out a definition that shows the stronghold is deep rooted in confusion. Quote, a stronghold is a mindset impregnated with a hopelessness that causes the believer to accept an unchangeable something that he or she knows is contrary to the will of God. End quote. Therefore, whatever you're hearing or believing is rooted in deception, error, a lie, or fabricated evidence appearing real. Now, God has already approved his very own eternally tested spiritual weapons for you to employ and to destroy every stronghold. Eternally, each piece of artillery stands lethal against the kingdom of darkness, keeping Satan defeated. That is the reason why you're always fighting from the place of victory, not trying to attain victory. Therefore, above and beyond, put on and keep on the whole arm of God. Likewise, daily activate the blood of the Lamb, the word of God, both locals and Rama, the name of Jesus, the enthroning praise and all types of prayer and your guardian angels. The enemy's best defense is his attempt to build a stronghold to keep you in a headlock. With his chain around your neck, Satan lusts to bring your soul into iron until you are incarcerated. The enemy's follow-up attack is to besiege you until you are incapacitated. If he is successful, Satan will move to turn your beauty into ashes until you are incinerated. The plot is either all at once or little by little. That is his struggle to overthrow you until he oppresses you. And that word oppression in Greek means to exercise dominion against you. Never allow Satan to have the first word or the last word. In faith, always resist Satan once you initially surrender yourself unto God 
And that is how you secure the Lord as your impenetrable defense in every battle, inside and out. With God as your stronghold, he completely surrounds you externally. And with God as your strength, he completely saturates you internally. Now, never concede to what seems to be a never-ending battle. Never forfeit the triumph of Jesus already conquered for you as an heir of the world. Jesus already gave you the world as the spoils of war to keep it conquered. You hold the winning position because Jesus already gave you the winning position. Say aloud, in the name of Jesus, I am more than a conqueror. God already gave me the winning position position. Why don't you say that again? Say aloud, in the name of Jesus, I am more than a conqueror. God already gave me the winning position. Thank you, Jesus. Now, what I'm going to do is show you how to bind and loose the enemy. We're going to use the blood of Jesus. We're going to use the word of God and the name of Jesus. So in the name of Jesus, I incarcerate, incapacitate, and incinerate every lie, error, deception, fabricated evidence appearing real. In the name of Jesus, I plead the blood against you, Satan, the principalities and powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, rulers, doctors of this world, the Antichrist, and the false prophets, and I render you inoperable in every weapon while warfare trying to wrestle against us or war against us or weaken us or wear us out or try to withhold or even withstand us. And I apply the word of God against you that no weapon formed against me shall prosper in every tongue that shall rise against me in judgment, I condemn, show to be in the wrong. So in the name of Jesus, you lose a hold of the absolute truth that I know I can absolutely trust in at all times, the knowledge of God. So in the name of Jesus, I say withdraw now the blood of Jesus is against you and the Lord rebuke you. Satan, in the name of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus already destroyed you who had the power of death. Jesus already destroyed the works that you have tried to do, Satan, in the earth. He also destroyed the weapon of the power of death because he has the keys of death in hell. And my Abba, my Heavenly Father, already judged you. He condemned you. He also has punished you. So withdraw now in the name of Jesus because I'm more than a conqueror through him that loves us. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Now on our program today, you're going to enjoy the music of Shalane Latrace as she presents Unstoppable. She is making a declaration showing that Jesus has made us unstoppable. And so she is decreeing just how fearfully and wonderful we've been made in Christ that you're unstoppable. I'm unstoppable. So don't let the enemy stop you because you can be resistless in battle. So let's hear Unstoppable, Shalane Latrace, and I'll be right back. Just be my last chance Keep it up and keep on trying I'm gonna put it all in your hands It'll be
visit us on the web at blog.kingsportionlive.com. That's blog.kingsportionlive.com. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is the tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section three. And I will address 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the fifth verse. And this is from the Living Bible. And it says, these weapons can break down every proud argument against God and every wall can be built to keep men from finding him. With these weapons, I can capture rebels and bring them back to God and change them into men whose heart's desire is obedience to Christ. So you have to understand that we're not just helping other people out and bringing them freedom, but this is a system we can use for ourselves to operate in the freedom that Jesus already paid for us. So be adamant about repossession every inch Satan dispossessed in his attempt to devour you. The enemy is already convinced it is impossible to penetrate revelation knowledge. That is why his target is to render you powerless by incarcerating, incapacitating, and incinerating your soul so that you cannot obtain, contain, and retain the spiritual knowledge of God. It's what you know is absolutely be true about God that you can absolutely trust. It is what you already receive through the Spirit of God and the Word of God that is truth worthy as well as trustworthy. It is what you already have hosted and even held on to that you know is the absolute truth that you can absolutely trust in about God. That is Satan's degenerate plan against you so that you will be sentenced to premature death or living a premature life. Now listen to this. Your new birth gives you 100% of God and your total surrender gives him 100% of you. Therefore, grant the Lord all the breathing room he desires so that you can become his habitation totally. Stay relentless about nourishing and cherishing the absolute truth that you can absolutely trust both in your mind and your heart. It is impossible for God to ever lie to you because it is impossible for God to change. Therefore, God cannot be ever overthrown by anyone in anything at any time. His eternal covenant with you overflows with each of his avowed promises to you, which ends all strife, no matter where it exists. On the other hand, it is impossible for Satan to ever tell the truth. To iterate, Jesus also characterized Satan as a father of lies and since his existence even. You see, God never created Satan evil. The devil chose his own perverseness, his own wickedness. So stay resistless in battle by capturing every single diabolical missile targeted against your thoughts and your imagination. Preserve your mind and your heart against serving as the enemy's launching pad or landing place. Holy Spirit will help you to detect and detonate all satanic influences without delay. Then you'll be able to usher every diabolical thought and belief under the custody of the Spirit of God and the Word of God. So it becomes the footstool of Jesus as well as yours. Determined to maintain the victory all of your life instead of living victimized. And next, I'm going to give you God's position on witchcraft and what he thinks about it in the word and also some examples of how me being in my position that I was in at the time dealt with it and against it on the Lord's behalf. And that would be in the religion mountain. In first. Samuel, the 15th chapter, the 22nd and 
third verse from the King James Version. This is a prophet Samuel going to King Saul in the Old Testament. And Samuel said to King Saul, Hath the Lord as great delight in birth offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry. Because I have rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from being king. In this instance, the Lord told King Saul how to dispose of the enemy. Well, in this verse, it shows what he had done. First, rebellion is revolt. And then witchcraft in here is divination. Stubbornness is arrogance and presumption. Iniquity is wickedness. And idolatry is idol worship. And those definitions are from the strong concordance. So we can see what the Hebrew definition they carry. These two scriptures also can be used to bind and loose as well. You can say, in the name of Jesus, I bind rebellion, witchcraft, stubbornness, idolatry, iniquity, and I loose it from my spirit, soul, and body back to Adam. In the name of Jesus, I will respect your word and honor you and I will be humble before you in the word. And I believe because of that, you will not reject me from being a king priest. So now you can see how you can use verses in your daily life. Here is a scripture text that I'm using now that I had not been before. I usually read in the Amplified Bible, the classic edition, but today I'm going to read it from the voice translation. It is Micah, the fifth chapter, the ninth through the 14th verses. And this is what the Lord says about how he's going to come against witchcraft. And he says, you will have victory over all your enemies and all who oppose you will be routed. This is what the eternal says about his judgment against witchcraft. He says, when that day comes, I will rip your horses from beneath you and destroy your chariots and weapons of war. I will rip the cities from your lands and cast down all your fortresses. I will tear all magic spells from your hands and overthrow your magicians and fortune tellers. I will tear down the images and sacred pillars among you. Never again will you worship these gods that your hands have made. I will uproot the sacred poles in your communities and tear down your towns. So he says, I'm making a clean sweep so that the only God they'll worship is the worship of the only true and living God of all. Now I'm going to give you some examples of me dealing with and how God used me in the workplace. The definition of witchcraft as taken from the 1828 Webster's Dictionary says intercourse with the devil. I know that as we study the word of God, we find out it is a direct link to poverty because it destroys the peace. Now, one of the things that happened for me is that I was able to pray for removal of any witchcraft influence of those who were practicing witchcraft right there on the facility and God removed them because it was an administrator who was having seances and that is communication with the spirit world, but it was not God. And then also had a, a supervisor who had planned to introduce voodoo to children who were attending bring your child to work day. And I went to personnel and I asked them what they want someone to teach their children 
voodoo and that was removed from off of that list and then also when i sang on public square that was to reverse the seed that was sown against witchcraft so that that would not stay there in the presence in our city and then outside of the city the lord had moved on me to tell someone who was reading material about the witchcraft and what he did there was a strong impression on me where it i call it a thumbprint of god where it lands on my head it does not hurt but i know he wants me to do something and nine times out of ten it may be not something i would choose and in this case it was but i went and i was obedient to do it what happened is that that his depression stayed on my head until i was able to talk to the person about what i believe he's telling me so it's important that no matter we feel uncomfortable or not we have the holy spirit to help us feel comfortable about doing things well because the person did not heed the devil moved into what you call the mystery of iniquity which even though the party was doing something it came back and it extended over to the children that she had and then it came back and it further caused premature death for that party so you have to know that there are certain things that we should not tamper with and if we're in it god will help us get out of it but we need to take the leads of god so we know that we are operating on the absolute truth that we can absolutely trust and that is the vow promises of god where he even has an eternal covenant with us i'll be right back after this message from my sponsor i was just standing there basking in the sun and all of a sudden i was soaking wet there wasn't a sign in the sky so i was unprepared without an umbrella but in the end it just didn't matter i loved every minute of it i knew i was living under open heavens it really does give new meaning to being overtaken by blessing not a dry spot this is fran the fan of h-d-o-r uh-oh here comes the rain again been listening to King's Portion Live with web host Catherine Joy Foster. Thanks for staying tuned to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is the tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section four. And I will continue addressing 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the 5th verse from the Living Bible, which says that these weapons can break down every proud argument against God and every wall that can be built to keep men from finding him. With these weapons, I can capture rebels and bring them back to God and change them into men whose heart's desire is obedience to Christ. So now if you have been saved, you already have the mind of Christ. What activates it is your yielding to Holy Spirit. You see, the mind of Christ is the very intellect of Jesus Christ. And that is even the definition in Greek. Please know your daily routine should encompass living in and by the word of God until you are totally marinated. The spirit of God and the word of God place you in a position whereby your mind is constantly renewed and your heart always believes the best so that you can expect to enjoy and experience the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. God preserved his absolute truth so that you can absolutely trust him for all eternity because God's truth grants you eternal emancipation you can walk at liberty and thrive in every season as the spirit of god and the word of god thrive in your daily life it is the absolute truth of god that you can absolutely trust that totally sanctifies you unto god as well as totally separate you from satan faithfully cover yourself with voice activated scriptures that pertain to your well-being and to every sphere of influence the perfect relationship with the word of god is 
practicing reading it aloud until you can host a resting place for the word of God in your mind and in your heart. You know the word of God is resting when it begins to commune with you. When the absolute truth that you can absolutely trust is realized, you will receive revelation knowledge from the spirit of God for the manifestation of the promise because now you have the rhema word of God on tap, the fourth word of God. Now, Holy Spirit inspires the Logos word of God in your mind and in your heart. And the Logos word of God is the laid forth word that's in the Bible. Then the rhema word of God is ignited out of your mouth because it is in your heart. And that is the poured forth word. Your rehearsal of speaking the word of God as you read it aloud activates the measure of faith within you because the spirit of God ushered you into the new birth experience. The faith of God is already resident within you when he arrives. It is a word of God that you need, that you believe, that you live is actually takes the manifestation to the highest level. So because you are reading the word of God aloud, you have an audience. You are reading it for yourself because you see it, you hear it, you speak it with your own voice. It gets into your own heart coming out of your own mouth. But the audience you have is before God the Father. It is before Holy Spirit. It is before Jesus. It's before the enemy because he's looking where there could be an advantage. But you're letting him know because you're declaring the decree that's in the word that he gets no space. It's before the angels because then they can help you out in your daily life. Please know that your practice confession transforms what you say into Holy Spirit empowered command that originates from the rhema word, the poured forth word of God that you received in your heart, that you released out of your mouth. It brings the manifestation of the promise of God into existence while eliminating all interference from the enemy. That is how Satan is impacted. The enemy hears Jesus' authority during your voice activation and he will vanish. Satan will vanish. That remains a process for the fulfillment of the abundant life Jesus promised you on earth. Now, if you attempt to replace your quality time before the presence of the Lord with other things, you will always feel empty because of a word of God deficiency. Never forget, you will still hunger and thirst to be filled. So refuse to let the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, or the pride of life rule you to satisfy you in any way. Now on our program today, again, you're going to enjoy the music of Shalane the Trace as she presents love like sunshine. She is showing that there are no dark spaces in Jesus. So what she sees and what she receives from the Lord is his sunshine in her life. But she can feel the warmth of his presence. And wherever his presence is, his power is there because you can't separate him from who he is. So she's receiving him and his manifestation in her life. And you can too. So let's hear love like sunshine, Shalane Latrice. And I'll be right back. Thank you. 
King's portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section five in our address, 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter, the sixth verse from the Living Bible. And it says, I will use these weapons against every rebel who remains after I have used them on you, yourselves, and you surrender to Christ. Remember this, that you can never properly prepare for an emergency, do an emergency. That is why you need God as your impenetrable defense. Then you will always rest satisfied doing good, bad, ugly, or really ugly times. That can only be accomplished if you stand ready and never let your guard down at any time. Then at his command, you reposition to move into combat. Holy Spirit's directives may be given to you at the onset of any attack, before, doing, or even after it is all over. It is for you to know that you are preserved from the enemy. And that is preserved safe. Now in the time of war, in the time of peace, you can be safeguarded from the enemy. Jesus protects and preserves you by his supernatural force of arms in order to protect and preserve you from every weapon of destruction as your shield, which is the word Megan in Hebrew from the Hebrew honey confirms that Jesus, our prince, has a limitless arsenal with which to guarantee perfect protection personally. That is similar to employing a bodyguard who takes the hit that was originally tended for you. A guardian 
is professionally trained to defend you at all costs, which means he is employed to even give his life for you at all times. How much more is Jesus Christ to you since he already died for you as you? Jesus is the Lord of the angel armies. Please know that his supernatural defense is not automatic. You have dominion to activate even angels. In the name of Jesus, you have already been empowered to authorize the promises of God daily. You enthrone Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords in your praise. Therefore, praise the Lord as your refuge, your fortress, your God in whom you can absolutely trust. Also employ your guardian angels for God already sent them to be ministering Spirits for every heir of salvation. Therefore, therefore, their assignment is to always work on your behalf as you employ them daily. As you are led by Holy Spirit, you will supernaturally be covered within the kingdom of God's defense system. Now, when you know you have something to fight for, refuse to leave your treasure out in the open at any time. To God, you are his most precious treasure. He loves so much that he always desires you to live in his presence at all times. To Jesus Christ, you are worth so much that he willingly sacrificed his own life to restore you to everything that was lost. The Holy Spirit, you are worth so much that God's presence and power are always accessible to you always so that you can possess the unfair advantage in any situation follow this sequence first and foremost learn to always obey god in all things if you know of any sin transgression or iniquity quickly move to repent and put it under the blood of jesus christ then oppose satan until he flees from you in failure while you are authorized to enforce spiritual weapons, never use them against any person, including yourself. God's artillery is expressly designed for any malicious obstruction ranged against your breakthrough in the spirit world. Any twisted invention contrived by the devil operating in the world system, God has already targeted for mass destruction through your cooperation with him. Never forget, Jesus rendered the world powerless of harming you in any way to, to keep you safe from enemy attacks. To reiterate, Jesus gave it to you. That is the world to inherit as well as the spoils of war. Now you are God's chosen weapon in the earth. Always surrender to God first. Stay agile and alert to resist any evil intention from Satan so you preserve your total freedom from the inside out. Host the mind of Christ, which is the very intellect of Jesus Christ in everything at all times. The mind of Christ, the very intellect of Jesus Christ is the most valued treasure to fight to preserve safeguarding God's truth in your mind as well as trust in your heart make you free indeed. The truth you recognize about God and the truth you realize about God are worth the fight indeed. It ensures that you always come home with the spoils of war and you never come home empty-handed. But you may not know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And that is for most, for everything else we talked about today to happen. So why don't you invite Jesus Christ into your life? He is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one can come unto the Father but by Jesus Christ. Why don't you say this prayer after me? Say, Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I ask you to forgive me of every transgression that's against you, any sin and all iniquity that could be against you in any way. And I ask you 
to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Now, Jesus, come into my heart and I invite you to be the Lord and Savior of my life. And when you come in, that's the moment that old things passed away and all things are new. And now I'm the newest creation in the kingdom of God. And I thank you for my salvation. So if you said that prayer, why don't you email us at info at kingsportionlive.com. That's info at kingsportionlive.com. And we send you some encouragement along the way. Now let's return to remaining portions of King's Portion Live after this message from our sponsor. We invite you to visit our new interactive website. Please log on to www.kingsportionlive.org. That's www.kingsportionlive.org. We believe that you will discover something that will speak to the royal blood in you. Thanks for staying tuned for the conclusion of our program today, which bears the theme, the tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is section six, and I will address the authority and power Jesus has given you to gain a decisive victory. In other words, you will be equipped to bring the spoils of war home. We've talked about the armor of God several times today, but now we're going to give you the scripture where it's from, and it is Ephesians, the sixth chapter, the 10th through the 17th verse from the Amplified Bible, and it says the armor of God. And he says, in conclusion, be strong in the Lord, draw your strength from him and be empowered through your union with him and in the power of his boundless might. Put on the full armor of God for his precepts are like the splendid armor of a heavily armed soldier so that you may be able to successfully stand up against all the schemes and the strategies and the deceits of the devil for our struggle is not against the flesh and blood contending only with physical opponents but against the rulers against their powers against the world forces of this present darkness against spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly supernatural places. Therefore, put on the complete armor of God so that you'll be able to successfully resist and stand your ground in the evil day of danger and having done everything that the crisis demands to stand firm in your place, fully prepared, immovable, victorious. So stand Stand firm and hold your ground, having tightened the wide belt of truth. That's personal integrity, moral courage, and the truth about God that you can absolutely trust at all times. And having on the breastplate of righteousness, an upright heart. And having strapped on your feet the gospel of peace in preparation to face the enemy with Firm footed stability and the readiness produced by the good news. Above all, lift up the protective shield of faith with which you can extinguish all the flaming arrows of the wicked one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of spirit, which is the word of God. Now, this is the Rhema word of God, the port forth Rhema word of God. So not only we have the armor on and the word of God, which is specifically for battle, the rhema word of God, but we also need the logos word of God. And it says in Hebrews, the fourth chapter, the 12th verse from the Amplified Bible, for the word of God, that is a logos word of God, is living and active and full of power, making it operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating as far as the divisions of soul and spirit, the completeness of a person, of both joints and marrow, the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. It's showing that the word of God is so sharp that 
it can come between to perfectly separate so we understand which is which. So I'm going to give you that example. Now, this is Paul's writing, so he's also writing the Ephesians account. But in Romans, the 8th chapter, the 36th and 37th verses, he says from the King James Version, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Now, this is written in the Old Testament. But now here is the Lord giving to him rhema word past the written word that's in the Old Testament. And it says, nay, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. It's showing that, no, we're not that sheep that is going to be slain. And that is the end of it. No, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. And that is the rhema word. He received that revelation knowledge even as he was penning this. And then in Revelations, the 12th chapter, the 11th verse from the King James Version says, And we overcame Satan by the blood of the Lamb, by the word of our testimony. We love not our life unto the death. So that means that it's showing now not only that we should have the armor of God on, that we should have the locust word and the rhema word, but we should apply the blood of Jesus Christ because we were redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. And then let's also look at the name of Jesus Christ, the power that's in the name of Jesus. In Philippians, the second chapter, the ninth through the eleventh verses from the King James Version says, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted Jesus and given him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So you can see how we use the name of Jesus, the blood of the Lamb, which is Jesus, as well as the Word of God. We're making those declarations. But let's also show you that you can activate your angels. Now I'm going to use this scripture from Psalm, the 103rd division, the 19th through the 22nd verses from the King James Version. So instead of just reading it out, we're going to use it as a command and a declaration. And it says, the Lord has prepared his throne in the heavens and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, ye his angels, excel in strength that do his commandments, hearken to the voice of his word. Bless ye the Lord, all ye his host, ye ministers of his that do his pleasure. Bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. So now that is a way to begin to activate. You can say even in the name of Jesus, I activate my angels to every sphere of influence that I'll need in this time and this day or as you're doing different even activities. But the important thing is that you get the word of God in you. So when you are Speaking and declaring you are not just saying something that you don't know anything about, but that word is in your heart. Knowing this, that thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And now thanks be to God, which always causes us to triumph in Christ Jesus amen so how would we like to leave this program today never give your seat of authority to an already failed world system let holy spirit reposition you so you can always see jesus as he really is the king of kings then grant the lord of lords of all the living room he requires without issuing any eviction clauses as your space re restrictions are demolished you can be as jesus is in this world a world overcomer in other words you are living on top of the world it is not living on top of you this is Catherine joy foster for king's portion where we speak to the royal blood in you 
have been listening to The King's Portion with radio host Catherine Joy Foster. Today's podcast is available for download. Log on to blog.kingsportionlive.com or email info at kingsportionlive.com.